Hello everyone. I hope and pray that you're doing well. I want to talk about certain things uh, and getting them in the right order and how important that can be. If English is your first language, uh, sometimes it's so easy to hear when something is askew, when something is spoken not in the right order. For example, if I say a sentence and ask you to put it back in the right order, if I were to say, everybody was surprised very, you would say, no, 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 it fits better to say everybody was very surprised. You just, you just hear it, you just know it. Or if I were to say, do you every day go by bus to school? You would say, no, it sounds better to say, do you go by bus to school every day, right? We just hear the right order. We just know kind of inherently what the right order is, but we don't know that about everything. Uh, what the right order is. We don't always get that right. Uh, in my devotions, I'm using this book called uh, Seeking God's Face uh, by a CRC pastor, Philip Reinders. And, uh, and in it, he's talking this week about the Exodus and uh, actually just we're reading texts from the Exodus and uh, uh, God rescuing his people Israel from Egypt, uh, just giving them deliverance and freedom saving them at the Red Sea, and then, after all that, giving them the Ten Commandments, you know, uh, at Mount Sinai. And that order is important. Uh, listen to uh, Philip Reinders' prayer here. Uh, I, I, think it, I think it's fitting. Liberating God, your commandments are well placed, not before you rescue your people, so they mistake them as a condition for your mercy, but only after you save. That helps me get my obedience straight, not grudging servitude, but a free life I offer in worship to you. Amen. You know, and, and that part, getting our obedience right, or getting our obedience straight, I like that, right? The law is not a new taskmaster, right? Israel had left, you know, their taskmasters back in Egypt. So the law, that's not a new taskmaster. Instead, they now have uh, a free life to offer in worship to God. If you look in the back of the uh, Psalter hymnal in, in, at the Heidelberg Catechism, one of the confessions of our, of our church, you can see this very structure baked into it. Uh, there are three parts to the catechism. Uh, misery, deliverance, gratitude. Sometimes, you know, with three S's. Sin, salvation, service. And, and so, first of all, the catechism acknowledges our sin and our brokenness, um, uh, our need for something beyond ourselves. And then it talks about how um, we have in Jesus Christ the one who has delivered us and set us free. So misery, deliverance. And then finally, um, it talks about how we can live thankfully for all that God has done, right? And, and we find in that last part, in that section on deliverance or service, we find the law. That's where it fits, the law. And, and in fact, that kind of an order plays a role in our very worship services as we gather every week. In, in the part of the service we call the service of reconciliation, uh, first we hear God's assurance that we are pardoned, right? That we belong to Christ and that our identity is as forgiven sinners. And, and we do that first and then, only then, do we hear uh, the form of the law spoken or, or some uh, instructions for holy living, living um, as this guide for how we will, should, will, will now live gratefully before God. And so the point is that the gospel doesn't begin with the law, although the law can certainly help us see our brokenness and our need for a savior. No, instead, the gospel begins with God's amazing grace. Um, I, I like how the late Tim Keller summarized this when he wrote, God's salvation doesn't come in response to a changed life. A changed life naturally comes in response to salvation. 
And, and maybe one of the things that I feel called to as a pastor the most is to remind myself and, and in fact to remind all of us that we've got to get that order right, right? Uh, and so when I think about baptism, right, this important sign and seal, uh, our baptism signifies that we are already a forgiven child of our generous God. Therefore, go live like it, thanking God with your obedient life. The peace of Christ be with you all.